My mum used to say that she took me to the doctors one time and when they do all your tests and your balance, he threw a tennis ball to see how I would react and I kicked it back to him at three years old. So I think ever since then, my mum was a bit like, okay, I think she wants to be a footballer. She was, like I said, the biggest driving force in my, in my life. Um, she was always very happy, very smiley. How I described myself when I was younger, my laugh. Everyone could hear my laugh a mile away, same with my mum. I remember I was actually playing football uh, at primary school. Uh, we had some Reading coaches come in to do a session and then the Reading coach was actually like, to my mum, he was like, she's really good, you should bring her along to the session. And I remember for weeks, I didn't go because I was terrified. I was so scared. I used to sit and cry. I refused to get in the car with my mum. I was like, no, I'm not going because they didn't have an under 10s. I was only seven at the time. And my mum would always be like, come on, like, stop being silly, go out and play. And I think that she really had in her mind that I'd become a professional. Um, I think to start with, she knew that I loved it. So she wanted me to be happy. And you know, she would tell me near enough every day, she was like, oh, you're gonna be the best player in the world. You know? But you know, when I'm growing up, all the other mums are probably saying that to their kids. So I'm like, yeah, mum, you just have to say that, don't you? Like, it's okay, like. She always felt that she had the best footballer as a daughter. She made that very aware. Uh, to all the other mums standing on the sidelines, she'd be like, yeah, but my daughter was the best. You know, one of them kind of mums where they were just like, yeah, but she's better, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, she was, she was a very, very special woman. We just finished our season with Reading Academy. And at the end of every season, we have uh, an evening at the Medeski Stadium where you go in, you sit with the coach and you kind of talk about what you've been good at this year, what you haven't been good at or what you need to improve on. We were just talking normally, she was just having a conversation and then she just said, oh, I don't feel very well. And then just put her head on the table and just kind of passed out. And yeah, I just remember that, you know, we kind of got told that obviously she had a brain hemorrhage and there wasn't much really that they could do for her. And I was quite young, so I, I was just a bit like, okay, like, she'll be fine. Like, they say that there's not much they can do, but she'll be fine, like, it's no problem. So I went back to my best friend's house, stayed there that night. We were sitting in the garden uh, the next day. It was a beautiful day, it was really nice. Uh, 29th of May and her mum came in the garden and said, you need to go back down to the hospital. And my aunties had come down, sorry. <laughs> I really want to talk about it. Yeah, and then obviously that was when we got the news. And I remember it didn't really hit our family much uh, for a long time after that, um, which I think was probably the worst thing that we could have done. Uh, we never spoke about her um, after that. Uh, and you know, like, like I said, we just carried on, like played football, was just normal. I'd done everything. I was at Reading, I was playing at England. It was going great, really, you know, it was kind of just like nothing really happened. Um, and then obviously, you know, grief caught up to a lot of us uh, later on. I'd turned very introverted when I was 15 because I was going through this dark phase, you know, I wasn't there, you know, I was a zombie. But I think it was, it was probably when I went away on an England camp where I realised, you know, okay, Something's not right here. I went up to Manchester and I remember sitting in a room with Mo Marley, who ended up managing me um, in the seniors eventually. I remember sitting in a room with Mo and I just said, I want to go home. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she was sat there like, what do you mean? And I was like, I remember, I feel so embarrassed about saying this now. <laughs> I remember sitting there and crying. I just said, I miss my mum. And I remember just sitting there and I was just crying, crying, crying. And she actually said to me, she said, okay, we're not going to come to you. You need to tell us when you're ready to come back into this environment again. And I remember I went home and 
uh, there was a woman who was the physio at Reading at the time, her name was Julie Tamro, um, who was absolutely incredible. She, I went around her house every night pretty much and we just watched, uh, we just watched TV, we just ate pizza, you know, everything. And I would have days where I would just not get out of bed, not go to sixth form, not go to college, not do any work, or I would get to the bus, bus stop and just break down crying, ring Jules, Jules I need you to come pick me up, like I can't go in, she would come and pick me up. Yeah, it was just trying to find myself again and allow myself to have that grief, you know, just to get out of the system and go again. And it was a real whirlwind few years, definitely. And from going, believing that nothing happened, to then just the world just coming down. One of my best friends, Sarah Deverne, um, she came round one day and she said, well, why don't you come and play for my team? She was like, we don't train during the week. When you turn up, we don't warm up. You literally just turn up on a Sunday, you play, we go in the bar afterwards. I was like, sounds amazing. I think that was really what brought my love back, was just going there and there would be no pressure. I think about her all the time. Towards the end of the season where everything was great, when we won the FA Cup, we won the league, I won the PFA, I won the FWA and you know all the other individual awards that came alongside it. I remember sitting on the coach back from Liverpool away was the last game of the season, we'd already won the league and everything had been done. And I remember just sitting there and I just cried. And all the girls were probably thinking, why is she crying? Like, this is really good, we've had such a good year. I just remember sitting next to the girls and I just said, I was just like, because there's only one person who I want to pick up the phone to and call, and I can't do that. I think one thing that I've definitely learned from it is understanding when your body needs to have a, have a break. Um, how to love yourself again is really important. Um, and just, you know, understanding that it's normal to feel a certain way when you've dealt with such bad experiences in your life. So I try and always resolve my life around how I can be better for her or, yeah, what she would think.